Damn, that's a lot of books. Now transform and roll out. Hello and welcome to a Smurf P video and today we are looking at the complete phase one of Transformers the IDW collections book one to eight so I'm going to show off each book so here is volume one with a very lovely picture of Megatron some brilliant brilliant art there and then on the side you have number one and they're all formatted the same all the way through Transformers then IDW at the bottom and then at the back, you get Megatron's blaster, his cannon. And for some reason, volume one seems to want to fall down quite a bit. And at it the just bottom, tells you what to expect in this volume. And it's got Megatron Origin 1 to 4, Spotlight Blur, Cliff Jumper, Shockwave, Nightbeat, Hot Rod, Soundwave, and the Infiltration, which was the first um, series. In the IDW world, 0 to 6. Okay, so just inside the cover, you got the nice little Decepticon logos. And then the same art from the front, just without the Transformer sign, which is A awesome. series introduction. So pretty much IDW uh, picked up the series. And I can't remember if it was with Marvel before, but it ended or failed. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some Transformer fans who will tell me what actually happened. But it was nice to... Um, a nice series for IDW to pick up and start. And a lovely scratch. contents page which tells you what pages do what. So if you're not interested in reading certain things, you can skip to Hot Rod Spotlight, like oh. for example. <laughs> Sorry about that. And Shockwave, and then you got Infiltration. So there is a fair whack of pages. I think there's around 400 pages. I could be wrong. I could be right, of course. And then there's a little bit of the bottom. It also goes into depth on the writers, the colorers, the assistants, the letterers, edits, etc., etc. For those interested, there is the binding. So it does hold. I'm not sure if it will test through time, though. That is another question. Um, also, so just in the spotlight of... series. So it, uh, pretty much most characters get their own little spotlight, etc. And it does some of them impact the bigger story. It's you know, it is their own individual story, but it plays in part into what's going on in the bigger story, which is at this point infiltration, for example. So infiltration starts off the series and most of the bots spend most of their time transformed in the series. Um, pretty much Megatron is on his phase, they're called phases of influencing the world and this and that's how they destroy a world, so to speak. So they are robots in disguise, they blend in and they do different little parts to influence that world in sending it to destroy itself and then they come in and finish the job that's how it usually and works. they also discover some sort of super energon called or which starscream tries to use to destroy megatron in this issue as you can imagine he fails okay so book two has optimus prime on it so we've now seen both leaders of the autobots and the decepticons and as usual, pretty much everything is in the same place as the first book, as you would expect. Uh, mine got slightly damaged. I can't remember what happened. I think it fell over or something like that, which um, irritates me. Which it also shows you that these books, though they're hard covers, they do, I feel like the, the edges, they have a weakness. Because I've got um, a similar one on book number It says three. phase two begins. So what this is talking about, this is talking about the different phases of Megatron uh, destroying the earth not phase one phase two because this is this as a whole is phase one series and then you go into phase two as a whole but this is talking about the different phases in the books so this has the two series which is 12 ish so the first one is stormbringer which has six issues and then escalation which i think has six issues as well could be wrong it's got six shot 
Ramjet, Ultra Magnus, Cup Mirage, and Optimus Prime as the spotlights. This time in the cover, we have an Autobot sign in Sever Decepticon The sign. usual contents page, which um, Stormbringer has two main stories first this time, and then the individual spotlights in order that I guess they happen in relation to the main story. So Stormbringer is more of a Cybertron oriented story. So basically Cybertron, they, whatever happened in the war, they ended up poisoning their own to escape. And apparently there's a creature back on Cybertron that is going to create some devastations. I think if I remember rightly, they may have only defeated it once before and it still came back. And here is that awesome creature. So Stormbringer um, is an exo story and there's lots of agendas here. So you've got the, the Decepticons operating their own agenda. You've got the humans as well who um, actually have their own agenda and they do certain things in here to capture certain robots in disguise. And the battle pretty much ends up with actually Megatron coming out on top and pretty much almost destroying Optimus at this point, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, and also Hot Rod arrives. So in some of the spotlights, so we're talking about sh six shot here, for example. So his spotlight is basically phase six is him. And basically he goes in there into any planet and he pretty much annihilates it. it for example, that's his role in the different phases. So in terms of tying up with the bigger story, so we've got Ramjet, he's arrived on Earth. And this is the bit where Optimus gets bashed by Megatron in the main storyline. And he's got his own little hidden agenda, which um, Megatron clearly sees and, well, boom, so to speak. So that's how the spotlights come into the bigger picture sort of thing. Cup's Tale is probably by far my favorite. So um, I think he ends up damaged or he ends up deprived on a planet. And as his um, fellow Autobots try to rescue him, he actually sees them in the, as, as enemies, as zombies. And sorry, spoiler alert if you've not read this. Um, basically, he ends up just simply killing his friends. But they end up rescuing him in the end. Um, after he's killed quite a few Autobots in the meantime. Okay, book three. So book three out of all of these books was always the hardest to get. When I first got these books originally, I actually bought the full set off some guy off eBay. And I got it for a, a damn good price, to be honest with you. But I sold it because I thought I read them and that's what I wanted to do at the time. But I think a year later it started nagging me. I actually really like that series. I actually want to reread it. So um, I ended up starting to buy them. And that's when I realized how hard a book free was. And um, I think at the time I got lucky. This guy was selling on eBay. And I think I got it for 25 quid. I think it was. But usually it was selling for something stupid like 60 quid, 40 quid something crazy like that so be careful if you are trying to get into the series book three is a tough one to get and um even though that i got it 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 got damaged here as i said with book two but that came on arrival this time that one wasn't me <laughs> so on the front we've got galvatron i think this has a very galvatron oriented story i love this picture of the cannon on there and then this is when I first was exposed to Transformers. I was reading New Avengers. The book, the paperback came out as this joint venture between IDW and Marvel. I guess they wanted to promote New Avengers and they wanted to promote Transformers. And it was a win-win for both sides. So you have this four-part issue here, which was really cool. And it's actually around the phases. They were trying to influence some countries. And as they do to destroy certain other parts of contractors power bases etc so it's a really good contract then they make people crazy by doing it so it's a really cool story then you got the devastation story and then you got these spotlights galvatron blaster rc grimlock and wheelie so with these phases you can see they go auto decepticon autobot decepticon sort of thing so we're back to decepticon pages and then we have the content so we got in this order so it doesn't start with the main story we have galvatron blaster rc then the new avengers transformers man and machine story then devastation grimlock and wheelie so blaster story was quite interesting because he was um he was a guy who went and told you know he kind of promoted everybody encouraged people via wavelengths etc whatever it was a list to 
and one of his own was brainwashed and actually tries to take him out but he's prepared to get back on the stage and carry on this carry on doing what he does and also ounce the traitor i guess rc story is pretty interesting because there isn't actually female transformers they're i don't know if they're male they're just male looking transformers um let's not get into that and jahaxis actually took whatever this transformer was and created a female bot rc out of that bot and which um enrages her and she actually goes um hunting for revenge basically which makes her a bit darker than the rc we were used to in the cartoons which is awesome so the crossover is cool it's around latavia so you've got dr doom in it you've got um basically megatron and his cronies um trying to use the superhumans to power themselves even more than they were before and it's pretty cool and i think they're using some sort of resource as well i can't remember ins and outs you get Iron Man, who's got a giant bot specifically for his theory that Transformers existed. And he actually um, connects to... Oh, no, he gets destroyed. <laughs> um, which is pretty cool. But I think he connected to some of the bots And there's as a well. bit of homage here. Because um, I think when Marvel did the comics, there was a, a Spider-Man issue. And he actually kind of tries to web up Megatron like this. So that's pretty cool. I do dig that. That they've you know, given a, a bit of credit where credit is due. So it's a pretty good story and one to get. Okay, the main story continues. So everything's going wrong. And I think that the Autobots from Emberati, they have to leave quite quickly. However, that does not go as planned. Meanwhile, the human agenda is they've created clones of Sunstreaker to battle our heroes. And we end up witnessing um, our kind of first headmaster. So our, our young friend here, I can't remember his name. He becomes basically Sunstreaker's head, which leads into a further story down the line which is pretty cool so i like how they're all connected etc so we get book number four which has grimlock on the front which is pretty awesome and the usual format goes without saying carries on the side the side is not damaged and it's phase four we've got a nice weapon there from grimlock and this has got the five part series maximum dinobots the four-part drift story, and then the spotlight, Cyclonus, Hardhead, Double Dealer, Sideswipe, Drift, and Metroplex, and Jazz. So for this book, we have no Decepticons or Autobots stuff inside, which is a little bit disappointing. We have the good old-fashioned contents page. Okay, so a lot of the spotlights actually feel like, um, like the main story, because they all feed into each other around... The old um, Prime story, Nova Prime story, where um, his ship was lost, etc. So there is um, a kind of conclusion from that perspective in that storyline that's been kind of in the background all the, all the way through to this okay, point. Okay, so Maximum Dinobots. So Dinobots haven't featured in this series until now. And the reasoning why is because I believe, if, if I'm remembering correctly, they were lost on earth many times i think they were tricked by shockwave if i'm remembering correctly um i would need to reread it again pretty much they wake up on this planet they're a bit lost and pretty much as you can imagine in dinobot fashion they go kind of on a rampage etc and uh, we also get the whole story around scorponok in this series as well and obviously the whole headmaster story with sun uh, sunstreaker and the human guy, I cannot remember his name for anything. I should have looked, to be fair. But I'm being a very, very lazy reviewer. And pretty much there, it ends up in a, a battle with Shockwave. And it all kind of ends way. Okay, we also get the Drift story, which I'm trying to remember. Um, I think they were... His people were on a different planet. And he ends up getting exiled for some reason. It's quite a compelling story, but... For the life of me, I can't remember the ins and outs. And um, somehow he ends up with the Autobots. Uh, I think they come across the Autobots' paths in his actual spotlight issue with a Cup and his whole um, team. Okay, Volume 5. Volume 5, in, in my mind, you could just read on its own without anything. And what drew me to actually getting these books was the All Hail Megatron story. For some reason, I really wanted to watch it watch it i wanted to read it because 
it's basically he wins in this story if that makes sense and there's a whole lot of betrayal there's a whole lot of story there's a whole lot of humans and there's lots of crazy stuff that happened so originally i was just going to get that and just read it as a one-off but um then i went and bought the whole set but that's neither here nor there so this is what probably got me excited for transformers other than reading that in the avengers and transformers crossover so on the front we have a awesome starscream story volume five and he has um quite a a compelling story in this book in terms of he doesn't actually agree with megatron and it's got the 12 issues of all hail megatron and then the four coda issues that follow so that's like the aftermath got a nice star screen weapon there and it says phase five begins. and we are back to having decepticon insignias inside um uncompared to the fourth one which didn't um also you'll note that in each book it has a book mark that's automatically inside so you don't have to go buy one i still prefer a bookmark but that's just me and here's the contents page basically two books in one you can get the whole series as one as well so and then you've got the aftermath which is quite a and lot and then you get this lovely it feels like um when wars are fought then they they used to do their promotional promotional pitches to get you to join it kind of feels like that kind of Okay, pretty it. much the story starts with the Decepticons just invading Earth. You don't actually know what's happened in the first bit of the story. They're just invading, they're just destroying. And it's these guys just trying to defend. You have um, Spike Wick Wiki. So it's quite, um, it's quite some big scenes. You know, you can see some fantastic battles between the Decepticons and the humans. The humans pretty much lose, and there's just some resistance. And Optimus Prime is pretty much damaged at this point. So, you don't see much of the Autobots in the first book. Um, you see little bits and bobs here and there. And you learn that there's a, a traitor. Somebody betrayed them, but they don't know who. Um, other than that, they all think it's a Mirage as usual. They're stuck on a planet which doesn't work well with rubber wheels. Their leader is badly damaged. And it's all gone very, very wrong for them. They are stranded. Uh, it's up to Company's team to come and save the day, perhaps. Meanwhile, on Earth, the humans are starting to rebel against the Decepticons. You soon find out that there is a swarm of, um, I guess, broken Insecticons in the, the Autobots' way. And they have to defend themselves. Okay, we soon find out how the Autobots were duped into um, a cavern. And they were pretty much getting um, blasted to pieces. Leading to this awesome piece of artwork where um, Optimus Prime gets the Matrix ripped out. Okay, we learn that Sunstreaker's ordeal by the humans um, actually made him hate them. Becoming a headmaster with um, the human was uh, absolutely devastating for him. And he made a deal with Starscream, anything to get off the planet. Um, I don't think he realized what he was agreeing to. But in the end, the swarms attack him and he goes out a hero. Stopping the swarm. And the battle is um, ferocious on Earth. It's absolutely brilliant. Everybody joining forces and pretty much leads to Megatron's downfall. Which is pretty damn cool. And then obviously they retreat. And Thundercracker decides that he doesn't actually want to go. And he actually um, stops this bomb from falling down on the earth. Uh, volume 6 has a nice picture of Bumblebee on the front. The usual standard stuff you would expect to see as we've seen throughout the whole video. And then we have Bumblebee holding his blaster there. In this issue, we have the first six issues of the Transformer ongoing series. So it's now just an ongoing series. It's no longer um, different stories each time. So they're now a full-blown series. We also get the Bumblebee series and the last stand of the records, which rec uh, records, which is the best story of this whole 
face. It's absolutely dark. It has everything in it. It is broad. We have lovely Autobot in Sigmas there. Sigmas. And then we have Volume 1, so for all mankind, the Bumblebee story, Last Standard Records, and Prowl Spotlight. So pretty much an, op an operation goes terribly wrong and Ironhide gets um, badly hurt. Optimus Prime surrenders to the humans. Hot Rod does something stupid which allows the Stunticons to combine. Bumblebee is put in charge of the Autobots, which is pretty cool. Never thought that would ever happen. So the record wreckers um, end up going to a planet to um, take out one of the most deadliest Decepticons ever. And whilst they're wrecking rule, they pretty much get ripped to pieces the whole team by Overlord, who is brutal. I mean, you know, just look what he does to Springer. Has his face in his hand. It's pretty cool. Pretty sick, but pretty Book cool. Eight as the sound wave on the front, and the usual format continues. Volume seven, seven on the side. Transformers, IDW. I get anything new from that, and it continues. So we have Transformers Infestations, as well as the ongoing series seven to eighteen, and then the four issues of Ironhide at the end. So it's like the spotlights are still going on, but there's more of a, a bigger story with them. Inside we have the usual Decepticon Sigma. And then we have the usual contents page, which goes into each kind of book, which is about six issues, which is pretty, pretty awesome. That shows you like Okay, so that. infestation, you have Bumblebee now leading the Autobots. And you have Galvatron's arrived on Earth. And I think he um, does something. Let's see if I can find out what that is. And that's pretty cool. And so clearly he's brought some sort of otherworld creature to the earth to infest it. Dead Horizon, which is pretty, wow, pretty awesome. All right, look at Cup. That's pretty cool. Okay, the second story, you got Decepticons um, teaming up with human countries. And the Autobots are trying to prevent them from doing more damage. But will the humans agree to that when they are following this lovely gentleman's rule? Also, Megatron returns with this brand new body. We also see um, Decepticon guns being released into the world. And these weapons lead to um, the Autobots doing something... Well, not the Autobots, the Jazz doing something stupid by killing a human being. Not good. Also, Megatron surrenders himself to... Optimus Prime? <laughs> and gets locked away. And Iron Eyed story leads him back to Cybertron. And then we have the final book, number eight, with Hot Rod on the front. And I, I love stuff like this, you know, you have all their circuits and stuff come out. They're Transformers. You know, of course they're going to have wires and Transformers inside them. <laughs> That's a bad joke. Very bad joke. The usual format continues. We have a nice bit of his arm with some nice side guns, which I dig. And the universe, so this has Heart of Darkness and Issues 19 to 31 of the ongoing series. Carol, which starts off with Chaos Theories. And into Police Action ends with Final Chaos Story. So the whole Chaos Stories in Phase 1 wraps up in this We've series. got the usual Autobot sign there. Ooh. Helps if I can turn the page properly. Damn it. Turn. And then you've got the content. So there was volume uh, of paperbacks, volume four to seven collected in this series. So um, I'm trying to remember what happens in volume eight and my mind's gone blank. So I may just flick a few through a few pages. I know they all end up on Cybertron. It has something to do with Galvatron bringing through some sort of darkness. And it ends up with... That sounded terrible. What was I thinking? It's okay. So the first story has uh, Galvatron and his team teaming up with Jahaxis, and we have RC trying to get her revenge again. And it's all around this sphere, which is a transdimensional portal. And we have the return of Nemesis Prime, which is pretty cool. Some, some nice art in this um, last and book. Galvatron has taken rule of Cybertron. Meanwhile, a damaged Hot Rod is looking after the Matrix. 
and they are clearly being attacked by some sweeps. But they and escape. he returns the Matrix to Artemis Prime. So you start getting a feel for where this is as they blast off heading back to Cybertron to stop Galvatron. Now I can't remember the ins and outs, but Megatron and Optimus Prime have a really good um, conversation. As you could imagine, old rivals, enemies would have. Once again, some of more amazing artwork in this series. The artwork throughout the whole thing is beautiful. And we get the final story on Earth, which is around Prowl, who's been left there. Called Police Action. And it's around his new friendship with Spike. So Spike did some, some crazy things, including killing a Constructicon. Constructicon? Yeah. I think that's right. I may be talking crap. Yeah. Constructicon Unite. And the final story is war. Pretty much against Galvatron. He sweeps there with some brilliant, once again, brilliant artwork throughout this whole series. Just look at that, that's lovely. I love this dark feel for it. I think we got in phase two some series that had this kind of dark tone to it. And just look at that, that's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Even shots like that, the back of Megatron, you know, going off to fight some creature that I don't know what he's fighting. <laughs> so it's all around Galvatron opening the heart of darkness. And it results in, as you can imagine, the Matrix being released. To stop it. Get whiteness. That's pretty cool. Love that bit. And you don't actually find out whether it worked or not. You just find out that in the future, Ironhide's kind of talking about future stuff. The end. Okay, so with a damn lot of episodes in these nice looking books, um, mine look a bit cheaper, so try and get them new. And they look fantastic. They look beautiful on your shelf. They tell the whole of Phase 1. You've got the whole Transformers series in these eight books. It is definitely one to buy. But obviously I'd recommend don't spend a fortune on it. I suspect give it a year or maybe two. I think we'll start to see omnibuses of the, IB, the, the IDW series coming out. And now that would be something that I would absolutely love them to do. So... Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Facebook page, Smurd P. And embrace the geekiness. Goodbye. <laughs>